afternoon to everybody uh, today uh, i welcome you all for this press conference conducted by press information bureau today we have a movie called luto which is uh, screened under world premiere section in the ongoing international film festival of india uh, before going into the movie cast and crew details i'll just ask chelsea can you please play the trailer so the movie luto is about uh, like have you as you all seen in the trailer in a desperate attempt to overcome the grief caused by his girlfriend's passing damian sets off on a journey across mexico haunted by memories and regrets he finds solace through conversations with strangers witnessing the rituals they participate in to cope with the death so the synopsis i just introduce the cast and the crew of the film luto uh, the movie is directed by andres arochi and we have the producer santiago tron and we have the lead actors rodrigo azuela and daniela valdez so with this small introduction i would like to open the floor for the questions um, uh, as i will also start uh, taking up the first question um, to director uh, andres arochi so this is a, your depth film and uh, what inspired to create a film about grief Mm, I guess the, the main idea behind this movie was I I knew I wanted to do something like straight from the heart so some something where vulnerable vulnerability comes out so for me death is and like I'm I've never been afraid of me dying but I've always been afraid of my people dying I've always been afraid of having to pass through grief and for me this movie was an investigation about how to deal with it when it comes because it's something that will happen to all of us right well said sir but uh, how did you approach this sensitive topic of grief uh, in a way that is both uh, respectful as well as authentic also i think the only way was being completely honest and working with the heart from the heart and we did this mix that's have documentary have fiction so we always had to take care of the people who were sharing their real stories and and then speaking from their heart so i think honesty was key and just being like completely honest with the people opening to them and respecting their moments when they open to us my question is to the actor rodrigo yes. uh, we saw some stunning visuals in the movie so as an actor how difficult was it for you to um, imbibe this difficult emotions because grief is and the loss of a partner is something very difficult and very personal so how challenging was it for you to portray this on screen well well i tell you it was very challenging for sure but it's something that that has always been very present on my mind as well I think we all go to through grief in different ways not only when people dies but when uh, love uh, finishes for example and uh, going through that kind of, of experiences in my life has been well, as as all of you m- must know is is very tough right but also it was like uh, this this journey and this movie was a way of discovering how to deal with that pain right and how to not get over it because you don't get over it 
but more like how to carry it with more dignity or with more appreciation, right? There's this uh, saying that, that I heard that is, uh, uh, grief is the price you pay for love, right? And love is absolutely worth it. And that, so that's my idea. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, this is for the director. As we know that this film is dealing with grief and we all go through this emotion, but here our protagonist is going on a journey to deal with it. But in most of our cases, as the ordinary person, uh, we are sucked into work, we are sucked into life just after it. So how relatable will this film be as a person who's dealing with grief and they don't have the time or the opportunity to go through the journey that the protagonist goes through. I I completely agree. Like the the character is very privileged, and I think we all are very privileged. Just by the only idea of being able to create art talks a lot about our privilege. But uh, I think the movie is not only about this privileged character, but it's also about a lot of people passing through grief in Mexico. So I think, or what I tried to do was create a portrait of our country through different circumstances, different beliefs, different religions, different social classes. So I hope the unprivileged are also portrayed in this movie. Excuse me. My question is, I'm Suresha from Online Media. My question is for you and for you, sir. See, all like to go to heaven, but when you but you have to die to go to heaven, and so people try to postpone death and live long. And you told that uh, you don't have a fear of death, but your close people dying you have. But how do you actually tell people that death is one more stage of life, a longer sleep? Is there any way you can communicate to people and make them more? Uh, uh, braver to die. I I couldn't understand the last. The question. Part. The question is, how do you communicate to people and inform them or educate them, saying death is okay, just don't uh, fear for the death. Well, uh, during the investigation of the, the movie, before we started writing or we created the concept, we were studying um, a psychologist who study like created this. Um, theoretical idea about grief and created five stages and it's a doctor I don't remember her name exactly right now but she created the five steps of grief and studied all her life and was like uh, they called her Dr. Death the last part of her story was her with cancer in the hospital and she lost her mind she had panic attacks and she lost completely so it was this person who knew everything about death and knew all the idea, but when she was there in the bed and it was coming to her, she lost it. So I think there's no formula. And right now I can say I'm not afraid of dying, but I don't know what's going to happen if tomorrow they tell me I have cancer. No. So it's, it's, it's a theoretical idea. It's, it's not a practical one. No, but I, I just, it's more about what I, I try to say when I say I'm not afraid of dying. It's, it's a saying I like a lot that I'm not afraid of dying, I'm afraid of not living fully. And it's more about enjoying the time we have here, you know, enjoying everything and living through the heart. Hello. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the movie. My question is, um, when the central theme is grief, it isn't grief uh, for the entire stretch of the movie. I'm sure you have layered it. First, there's intensity, then there's coping up. So he goes to uh, different strangers to talk. How did you manage to layer them uh, very categorically? And second question added to that is, if it is a comedy or if it's any other genre like romance, it's easy to set up the mood and involve your entire crew to the mood so that they get on to the shoes and act. But how do you manage to set that mode of grief and get your actors on board? So I think that was the main challenge for me as a director. I come from a photography and cinematography background, so it was my first time really working with actors in that way or having their responsibility. Um, 
I think to answer the first part of the question, I think the it was a lot of improvisation, but we were also in real scenarios. So it was a lot about trying to create the best atmosphere for them to go in into their feelings and, and to connect with their deepest um, part of their heart. So it was a lot about creating silence, creating the right space. We also shot this movie with a very reduced crew. And that was a decision, not only economical, but we wanted to be able to just be two or three people on the set and leave the actors to what they needed to do. But it was more about also creating this circle of trust where we all became very tight friends. We traveled 14,000 kilometers together and we experienced a lot of things together. So a, a lot of the movie was improvised. So the pace of the movie is very related to what we were traveling and what we were living through while we were passing through different towns. So I guess at the end, it was only creating the space for them to be free, to connect to, to their pain. And I guess that it was that, no, like trust and, and creating the space for them and protecting it and making like a, like creating a shelter for them to be safe when they open themselves that way. Uh, so my question is for the actors, Rodrigo and Daniela. So it was uh, a very intense role, which involves a lot of emotions that you, uh, I would imagine are not easy to summon and then to portray on screen. So I was wondering if there are, if you experienced any after effects, any lingering effects uh, of uh, doing that character. Um, yes, of course. Uh, the, the, my whole life after the film is a lingering effect of those of this movie for sure. So it's it it was really tough to film. Uh, I, I would do it again a hundred times for sure. Uh, do you feel you've changed as a person? Yes, thank it, God. Yes, it changed you significantly. <laughs> yes, for sure, for for sure. Yes. Can you describe how? Well, it was it was very challenging. It was very, I. So acting is, uh, for me at least, the kind of thing that I that I admire a lot is about transparency, about being uh, basically naked, and so finding out how to how to be transparent and how to be honest makes you find out things about yourself that you don't that you don't really know, right? So you learn in that in that process, and it makes you stronger, makes you stronger to know yourself better. And also, I think it, it gave, gave me a lot of trust in, the, in, in just the process, right? If, you, if you're really there, if you're really present, and you trust the process and you trust yourself, things will happen, right? <laughs> and even if it's really hard. And that, that is something that, I really, that really changed me. It gave me strength, I think, yes. And if I can add just a little thing, it's... It didn't only change the actors for me, like it changed the whole crew. No, yes. I'm talking about technicals, like my our second they see, he became one of our best friends. His life changed. It, it, the stills photographer, he came back. He got a divorce. Like it, it <laughs> we we had a journey, and this is a footprint of it, yes. and this is a beautiful footprint for us. But w what really happened was a journey that we all went through. Yes, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ask it how was to come out of that. So yes. as our Andres said, um, we created this environment and I let myself be in that emotion while we were shooting, you know, fully feeling it. So when we were stopping and then we will continue through the day. Sometimes my energy was very low because I will let myself really feel it and not just like have it for the 20 minutes filming, you know? But it was part of the experience to really let the character be alive, you know? And not just pretend to be in it. Um, and we would sing and dance for you to bring you out for, was, of the He whole, will come out yeah. of like after the the scene and he will be like, let go, it's not yours, like, you know. But sometimes it's like, it's not that easy because 
I go through like so much sadness and I let myself feel this empty that I cannot just go back and be like, okay. So I will stay there and then I will go home and I was just like very drained energetically. So they will like, after the scenes, like sing to me <laughs> this song that we, after tattoo on ourselves, yeah. called Happy Happy. Yeah. And we were just feliz, singing feliz, feliz, yeah. feliz. And yeah, it was like a way of like bringing the energy up. And also Rodrigo was like my team that he will like help me a lot to be calm after some of the scenes. So yeah, thank you. Uh, Andres, just adding to uh, what you said, you had stated that this is a portrayal of how people in Mexico deal with their grief and emotions. Can you tell us some interesting stories or some narratives that you found while exploring this theme? Or are there any interesting practices of how people deal with grief? I mean, we, we, we've we saw many. Like, the first cut we did of this movie was almost six hours long. So there's a lot of interviews and a lot of characters that didn't make the last cut. I still think it's a long movie. And we maybe should have cut more, but I couldn't. I didn't have the heart to do it. And... Like it's it was just all these crazy experiences we had and very deep and personal, no? Like I think India and Mexico are very similar in the way people open their hearts to strangers, no, and how they stop being strangers very fast, no? And I think it was just beautiful traveling fourteen thousand kilometers and meeting all these amazing people all the time. But I think the the only formula that uh, we found was something that everyone repeated that it was important to do rituals and it doesn't matter what kind of rituals, what kind of religion, anything. If it's turning on a candle, if it's visiting his hometown, if it's just praying or cooking his favorite food, any kind of ritual. And everyone repeated that just do as many, as many rituals as you can. And, and I think that was the beauty of it. Just seeing how people light candles or how people just, went and talked to a brother they haven't talked in 20 years like everyone certain like in the heart everyone knows what they have to do but sometimes you have to confront your fears to do that and i think that that's a power of grief you no know? like dealing with everything that left that that you left like untied you know? um but yeah i don't know a specific story i mean it it, it was beautiful like i guess one of my favorite stories is there's a scene with where in, where there's four siblings who their dad drowned in front of them when they were kids and they're they're close friends they're very close friends and they're a beautiful family they're they're a privileged but very smart family they they grow out they grew up in the wine country in mexico and they have like this intellectual but farmer life and they're just a beautiful family but the dad drowned and this was something they never talked about and when we were shooting there they have the beautiful ranch and we were like can we shoot it in your beautiful ranch for sure and then we were talking and it's like oh there's this thing here do you want to share this and Naso, the, the the girl she said like yeah of course but i don't th you'll never get my brother to do this and it's like okay, but if you if I try, you're okay with it. And she said like you'll never get him to do that. I call him. He immediately said yes. And I was like, oh, I just got your brother to do it. And she said like okay, let's do it. They didn't talk. They didn't say anything. They just brought a bottle of wine, sat down on a table, opened the bottle of wine. We had created this thing where he was gonna talk, and he was. It was like. Just let them do their thing. Let's just be a witness. Let's try and be respectful. And they have a brother that has a disease. I don't know the translation. Oh, it's like a MS, I think it's called. Um, well, he has a disease and he doesn't speak very well. Um, and he wasn't going to be a part of the scene. But we were already shooting. We were already rolling. And he just came out. And he wasn't mic'd up. And it, and the sound guy is just like, this guy doesn't have a microphone. It's like, we are not going to intervene in this. Let's let this happen. And three 
and you see an older brother telling his younger siblings how their dad died and how it was and the power of seeing that exactly one year later she called me and she told me like i just went for the first time to a beach where my dad died and left some flowers there and it's thanks to this thing that happened and she was very thankful and it's like I don't know. It was beautiful. It's constellations. It's happening. It, it's magic was in front of us. And, yes. and it's beautiful that they let us be a part of it and shoot it. And now we have it there for, for everyone. Um, my question is to Andres and Santiago. Um, like you just spoke about an incident and uh, like adding to that. Uh, so it's a docu fiction. Like it's not entirely a documentary. It's not entirely a fiction. So to Andres, how did you decide that you wanted to make a document? I mean, docu fiction and not entirely a documentary or entirely a fiction. And to Santiago, I want to ask how how what was the process of producing such a such a film? Because it's again not entirely a documentary and it's something that is not um. Uh, entirely under control because such moments happen and such kind of processes happen in case of documentaries. So the, the original idea was always creating a fiction. I guess by the reality of it and by the concept, I decided I wanted to have improvisation with characters and doing exercises. We found out that through improvisation, always the truth comes out. And when we started talking about deep, emotions as grief or as pain there was like all this beautiful story started to come out and that's like there's no way we can think of this or we can create this and then it was like wow like we we can really do a portrait of our country through this and we we needed something that intervened everything and if it was a documentary, I wouldn't like a voiceover to to explain that or a host. And we, I, I just, I also needed a way to have my vision or my saying. And it was like, okay, so we can create these fictions where we can all talk through, and then have the reality. And at the same time, it's this is a project that sort of lived by itself. Me and Gonzalo, the, my co-writer. We traveled to a cabin that belongs to my brother in, in the forest in the south of Mexico to write another movie. And we just had this idea and we wanted to shoot this movie that it was only going to be through a POV and it was going to be conversations with hitchhikers. And we were going to travel and pick up hitchhikers and we would talk to them. And it was going to be all about their conversations. We kept on working. His father passed away. We, we we discovered we wanted to talk about grief. Then the pandemic came and it was we were gonna do a road trip from Mexico to Alaska and then pandemic closed the borders and we said, Okay, let's kill the movie, this is not gonna happen. And then it was more months of pandemic and it's like I really wanna do this movie. So we decided to stay in Mexico and then it's like okay, let's let's embrace that we're staying in Mexico and let's do a portrait about Mexico. And it started growing and started growing and I passed through maybe six producers that I I, I mean I work usually as a cinematographer, so I, I've been in a part of the Mexican industry for a while now. But no one wanted or no one fit fitted really there in, in the way I wanted to shoot. Like it, it was a way where I just needed a couple of friends to help me basically carrying stuff and then the technical stuff. And Everything else was creating a journey and, and I needed real people that could be there that could connect with the people like that. And me and Santiago, we've worked together for a long time, but his background was more in, in lighting and, and producing events. But um, I needed someone I could trust. So I, I, I looked for him and I, I had to convince him slowly to, to become a part of it <laughs> until he was like way into deep yeah. and now he's a movie producer if you didn't hear next to me yeah so uh just to finish a bit with the question that you made it was like andres said we've been working for a long time before i do have a different background and i do multimedia art and light but then whenever 
he had an idea to shoot something that really came from a passionate place, he'd always look for me, you know, and we would do like these side projects from, uh, aside from our regular jobs, we would always shoot these things. So it just made sense at the end that I ended up producing this. And the way that we actually did it is that we didn't have much budget to it. Uh, a lot came from our own pockets as well. It's it's a passion project for ourselves. So basically what we did, it was just, you know, money in the pocket, let's hit the road and let's solve it while we're there, you know? And it's a bit of guts <laughs> to just go there and, and, and do it that way. And it did open like a whole new universe for me and for me as and, and Andres as business, business partners going into the future. Right now we're all we're starting to, you know, to create two new different movies. So it, it's like a journey that started in a way and now it's it, it's taken shape and, and we're going to see what happens next. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, okay, so my uh, very small question to Santiago and Andres, like, have you seen any of the Indian cinema, any Bollywood movie and your experience being in India till now and the festival? I mean, being in India is amazing. It's my second time here. Um, I was in Kerala a couple of years ago. I was shooting a commercial there as a cinematographer. And it's it's a beautiful place, but more than the place, I think it's the people. And it's 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 very strange seeing this image. It's like being in a mirror, you no? Know? Seeing the Mexican culture reflected in the Indian culture. And it's everything. It's the food. It's the smiling. And there's slightly things that we do different. Like the nodding in the head, you do it this way and we do it this way. <laughs> but it's the same thing. So it's, it's 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 crazy being here and just seeing how it's 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 our mirror, you know, it's the other side of the world. And I think that's beautiful of being here and and the spirituality and that's that's why we were very excited of bringing the movie here. Yeah, and to answer your question about uh this is my first time in India. It's been amazing. We're just going to stay for some more days and travel a bit around uh, apart from Goa now that the festival is coming to an end. And about m watching Bollywood movies, I can't say that I have watched a lot. I have watched some in, in, you know, in my life. But then again, when I was in the plane coming onto here, I did, I did watch a couple. I just, you know, I, I figured I'd just start getting into, into the whole culture. <laughs> and I think they're pretty fun. Definitely. <laughs> We're trying to get Daniela into a movie in Bollywood, in case you know anyone. <laughs> also myself, Chris. He's <laughs> a great dancer. <laughs> not as good. Also not as good. Sir, so, this is regarding a question on your viewer. Can you be audible, sir? Bit audible. Yeah. This is regarding our viewership. Other than Mexico, which is South American countries are your, uh, you have a, a popular audience to watch your movies. And how do you plan for 2024? How to take it to more film, uh, I mean, international film festivals? How do you work on it and plan it? I mean, for me, it's been, it's been a, the worst part of the whole process has been distribution. Like, I've been a filmmaker since I'm like 13 <clears throat> years old, and I've been creating stuff and creating images and taking pictures. 